Hey guys, I'm Mel and today I'm going to review the books that I read for the Mental Health uh, Awareness Week Readathon. So this past week was the Mental Health Awareness Week Readathon hosted by Bookish Realm. I'm going to leave the link on the description. And basically you had five challenges to spread awareness about mental health, not only to everyone else, but especially to yourself. The first book I read wasn't a mental health book. The first challenge is read a book with green on the cover. And I read Secrets of the Summer Night by Lisa Claypas because I wanted to read something fluffy. And this was so much more than that. This book is basically about this girl who wants to find a husband just because her family is going into poverty so she wants to save them and there's this guy who's very wrong for her end goals so she's trying to stay away from him. This was actually so much better than I expected. I adore historical fiction books, but I never read a historical romance. It was adorable and addictive, and I couldn't stop reading. This was gorgeously written. The characters didn't feel romanticized, and the situations didn't feel romanticized. And even some scenes were absolutely hilarious, and the events and the way they acted with each other felt very accurate for the time period. Sometimes when I read historical fiction, I wonder to myself if that would really happen. Like things that are improper, I don't know if they would really happen in that situation, but this book followed all the rules of historical fiction and it ticked all the boxes and I loved it. Then I read Am I Normal Yet by Holly Bourne. This was a challenge of reading a book with a character with a mental illness. And this is about a girl who had a very bad episode of OCD and anxiety a few years ago and now she's getting off the meds and she's going back to school and trying to get her life together but she still has OCD and a very crippling anxiety and also she starts a feminist club with two of her best friends and I thought that was the most amazing thing ever. I think it's one of the best portrayals of anxiety that I've ever seen. I don't have OCD but I do have anxiety and sometimes they are described very poorly and this described it perfectly. I think it described OCD perfectly because I understood it and I could put myself in her shoes. The combination between mental health and feminism and a strong female friendship made me so happy and if you're looking for something like that I would definitely recommend this book. They wondered about things that were totally valid like periods and their place in society and feminism and dating. It tackles big issues that teenage girls are actually asking all the time. Then I read Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson and this is for the challenge of reading a non-fiction book. This is about Jenny Lawson's life and her dealing with anxiety and depression. There were so many things about this book that I enjoyed and I felt like every time she talked about her illnesses, it was in an accurate and important way. I also laughed out loud a lot because Jenny Lawson is honestly a hilarious author. As someone who lives with the same illnesses, I could say that everyone's experiences are different and I always love to know like everyone's experiences. Some chapters were absolutely genius, especially when she tried to spread awareness about the illnesses and tried to explain how they felt. But unfortunately, some other chapters weren't as good. I thought the beginning was amazing, but as the book went on, I wasn't that interested in it anymore. Apart from that, I would definitely recommend this book for anyone who wants to know what these illnesses feel like. Then I read Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman. And as you can see, I was very excited about this book. So when you first start reading this book, you start reading about Caden and two of his experiences in life. One is his normal life, trying to live as a teenager and as a student, and some weird things start happening to him. He's trying to hide his obvious mental illness. We don't know what he has, but he's definitely trying to overcome something. In other chapters, we get to read his life on a ship, trying to get to Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part in the ocean. And if it sounds weird, it's because it is. And when you read a book about schizophrenia, you have to know that 
you're not going to understand things sometimes. You're not going to understand everything from the get-go. You have to have an open mind to have places missing in the story, to have scenes that represent other things, to have weird things coming at weird places, to never have the whole story, especially because we're reading from the point of view of the narrators. In these books, I think first person is crucial so you can understand everything that's happening and you can understand actually what he's seeing and what he's experiencing. Because of all of these things, it took me a while to get into it, but when I did, I loved it. This was an emotional book, but definitely a brilliant one. The metaphors and the way the two stories intertwined was just mind-blowing and Neil Gisterman did a brilliant job with this book. Also, that was for the challenge of reading about a mental illness you don't know much about. And finally, for the challenge of reading a book by an author with a mental illness, I read A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. It's basically an essay on women and fiction. It's a feminist text with arguments for a literal and figurative space for women. Writers in a literary tradition normally dominated by the patriarchy. This was highly informative and important book. I would definitely recommend it for all women who are trying to be writers and also for everyone who is interested in feminism. This is actually an essay of a lot of lectures that Virginia Woolf gave this is super thought-provoking. It definitely makes you think a lot about the place of women in literature and characters that are women and writers that are women. Basically, she says how the creativity of women can flourish in a room of one's own. So yeah, those are the books I read for the Mental Health Awareness Week. And I thought it accomplished their goals because it made me question things. It made me open my mind, especially about the way society sees mental illnesses and the way we have to change that. So yeah, that was everything for today. Hope you liked this. If you did, subscribe and I will see you when I see you. Bye!